Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to work with the workflows in Adobe Premiere Pro, as well as how to edit them and create your own workflows. So what's really important is that Adobe Premiere Pro is not a static program, meaning that you can change around the panels any way you want. You can manipulate and move stuff around. And you, know, you can open up new panels by going to window and clicking on any one of these, and it'll open it up somewhere in the composition. And so what a workflow is, is a combination of these panels. So if we go to color, it has a focus on color. If we go to effects, it has a focus on effects, etc. So what you can actually do is create a workflow that best works for you in any given situation, because these are just gonna be the defaults, but you know, there's a thousand different scenarios out there and people like to work in different ways. So it's very important to understand that you can actually manipulate the program to better fit you. Let's get started and let's just go through a mock example. Like we wanted to create ourselves a new workflow centered around something that let's say we do a lot. So let's make a workflow workflow around markers. So let me just create myself a new sequence by dragging some random pieces of footage in here. And then I'm going to click on the markers tab right here. And I'm actually gonna click it and drag it up to the left over here. And so we just edited this. So now we have this big markers tab. We don't want it that big. We need the source open. Let's say we like the effects open, the markers open, and then the timeline over here. Cause what we're doing is we're trying to add different markers. So you can see when we click it right here, we can actually right click on this and click edit marker. Let's say that this is we actually want this one to be an orange one, and we're marking different random things in the video as we move across. So we have a workflow now that where we can actually organize these markers up. Let's make this as big as the colors are. We can add comments in it, and we can actually go through and mark this piece of footage in a way that works best for us. Maybe we use this all the time, and so we always wanted a workflow where we can just click a button, it'll arrange it like this, and we can use it again and again. So after you've created a workflow that you sort of like, you can actually go up here to the one that you're standing on um, right here, and then you can go to save as a new workspace. And then let's name this just what it, you know something we can always understand, markers. And as you can see, it adds it over to the, the right here. So if we go back to editing, you can see it's the same. So let's reset that back to what it originally was. So this is sort of Premiere Pro in its essence, um, what it always opens up to in default. And you know, we can keep switching between these, but now we've gone through the workflow. We're like, you know what? It's time to add some markers to this. So we can now just move right over here, click on the markers tab, and we now have a workflow that is completely and totally, you know, adjusted for us. What happens if up here though, it, we don't see it, or maybe that we wanna try to, you know, uh, remove some of the stuff that we don't use all the time. You can actually, let me do that again. You can click down here and go to edit workspaces and you can actually sort of move these around. So let's say I don't use audio very much. So we're going to throw that into the overflow menu. Um, I never use meta logging. So I'll throw that into do not show and let's throw that one into down here as well. We can click and you'll see it readjusts the top bar. Then the overflow menu is this button right here. So it puts those in there. And as you can see, meta logging is completely gone. Cause I said, you know, I don't use that. It's getting in my way. So I threw it in do not show. So you can even, you know, sort of change around the workspaces so that they fit what you like to see. And then, you know, of course it's just, um, I think it's alphabetical order. Actually, no, it sort of moves in how you would edit the things like from left to right. So that's what it default comes in. But if you want to reorganize them yourselves, you can do that exact same thing. So yeah, that's basically what I just wanted to go over is how you can actually manipulate these things up here. And maybe you don't like the way that editing is set up. Maybe you like to edit differently. So you can actually move stuff around yourself. Um, make this, I don't know, make this larger. You like it. You like a really big view right here. So, you know, you can make this larger and you can actually save over the, ch the changes to this and recreate the default as something. I would always recommend creating a new workspace just because Adobe has, you know, they're onto something with this. They probably do a little bit of research to build these. So I think keeping the defaults is important. However, if you really don't like the default, you can save over the default and just sort of move in a new direction. Um, other than that though, you can create your own by, you know, going up here into the windows tab and dragging in any new ones. And basically that's kind of it. It's just understand that Adobe Premiere Pro is extremely sort of flexible. It can be moved. You can move these panels anywhere you want. You can really do a lot of fun things um, and build this any way you like. And you can actually I have a second screen to the right here. I can actually click and drag these right over off to the right side. And now you don't see it, but you can see it coming in right here. And I can build a workflow or a workspace. Um, the terms kind of change depending on which program you go into, but I can build um, this workspace 
you know, a complete second screen one. So if I clicked on it, I could actually make something up here that says like, you know, utilize two screens. And I, you know, I could put the entire timeline over here, maybe the entire preview over here. And when I just click a button, it would instantly expand everything over to the right as well, which is actually something really, really powerful and something I might actually implement. But yeah, that is basically it on this tutorial. Just understand that it's very customizable and that you can adjust it yourself. Thanks everyone for joining me for this tutorial. Uh, if you want to see more tutorials similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make content quite regularly every other day. So yeah, subscribe to see some more, you know, video related Adobe sort of lessons. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, or you got any suggestions for future tutorials, those in the comment section below and I'll answer them and try to make any suggestions you guys have. And until next time guys, see ya.